everyone and happy Saturday! It is Jocelyn Louise here. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, today I want to talk about feelings and feeling our feelings and where and all of the unpack a little bit of what's behind there. So first I want to start out by saying that all feelings are okay. All feelings are human and they're normal and we all feel them. It's totally normal to feel all of the different feelings. There's a whole spectrum of them. So it's not just happy, sad, angry, and even those ones. <laughs> happy is kind of the good feeling. Yay, we all want to feel happy all the time. And of course, yes, ideally we do. But there's also times where we're going to feel sad. There's also times where we're going to feel angry. And that is okay. Our feelings actually serve a really big purpose. So sadness can be this really big release. It can, we need to release our emotions. We need to feel our feelings and let them move through. So our emotions are energy in motion, essentially. So when we don't feel them, when we block them, when we bottle them all up and we shove them all down and think, nope, I'm not, I don't, no, I'm not allowed to feel that feeling. It's not okay. If I feel angry, then I'm a Karen or I'm a, I'm crazy or I'm over the top or I'm whatever. <laughs> We all get angry at certain points. Now, anger, the purpose of that one actually spurs us into action. It alerts us that something is wrong, that something is not okay, that I'm not accepting this. Hang on, this this pisses me off. Why, why does that piss me off? Or more importantly, what am I gonna do about it? So anger has a purpose. It actually spurs us into, we're going to change something here. Um, so it can also tell us that a boundary has been crossed. And you think, no, that wasn't okay. <laughs> I'm not okay with that. I don't want that to happen again. So <laughs> um, it can spur us into taking action on that or to setting some more or new or different or some boundaries. <laughs> I didn't, boundary setting has been a thing for me as well. Um, that I had to learn how to set some. I learned, had to learn how to say no. <laughs> Honest. Um, <laughs> but so we want to learn how to feel our feelings. That if I, so first accepting that they're all okay. That there's none that are, no, not allowed to look at that one, not allowed to feel that one. It is how we respond to them and how we act on them that makes the difference there. Where we can think, oh no, it's not okay to be angry. It is absolutely okay to feel angry. It's what we do with it. Yeah, you can feel angry, but you can't bite your brother because you're feeling angry. I can see that you're feeling angry, so I'm just thinking of my kids here. I can see that you feel really angry about that it's not okay for you to hit or I'm not willing for you to hurt me or to hit me or to bite him or to whatever. <laughs> but it is then redirecting and finding some ways that we can express those feelings because we don't want to just shove them down and say that they're not okay. You know, boys don't cry and don't be a silk and uh, no. <laughs> men seem to be the only feeling um, that they're allowed is anger. Anger is acceptable for men because boys aren't allowed to cry. You're a sook or you're a wimp or whatever if you cry, <laughs> even from little. And it's, oh, you know, stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. Like, oh, it starts really early. It starts really young. This whole children should be seen and not heard thing. So don't be too loud. Don't be too playful or too excitable. Just sit quietly and just be a good child, whatever that means. <laughs> sleep. <laughs> good babies sleep, right? <laughs> eventually <laughs> so we're allowed to feel the feelings and then it's channeling them or expressing them in resourceful ways so yeah you feel angry and you want to hit or you want to bite I'm not willing for you to bite I'm not willing for you to hurt him or hurt me what we could do or problem solve here if they're in that if they're still in the stage where they can problem solve before they've hit the screaming tantrum stage um, that point we've passed the point of no return there <laughs> give it an outlet okay you can scratch the pillow you can punch the pillow you can throw the ball let's go outside and throw the ball let's go outside and run movement is amazing for moving those feelings through so again emotion is energy in motion and we want to move that through yeah <laughs> so if we move our bodies especially big feelings like anger that can help get that out and it can help let it go so if we're adults we might go for a run and that might help get it out we might go for a walk and we might be listening to some angry music or we might be bitching about it in our head <laughs> whatever vent it you can journal it out you can write all the angry things if you're feeling really angry sometimes journaling is like just frustrated I don't want to sit down I want to move <laughs> sadness might be a really nice one to journal out um, quite often when I'm writing some of those really big emotional posts um, I'm bawling my eyes out while I'm writing those and so the one that I wrote this week about um, mama you're not broken 
I cried the whole time I was writing that and the whole time I was <laughs> editing it and then I thought you know what I need to actually go back and reread that and have a bit more of a cry there <laughs> there's, there's more to release there there's, that's some big stuff I can release that like yes I've already recognized that I'm not broken I used to think I was now I know I'm not but I still haven't released enough around that <laughs> so I'm coming back and I'm having a bit more of a cry now that for me is big because um, when I started this stuff like two years ago now um, I couldn't cry I would be talking about big yucky hurtful nasty things that have happened in my past whatever things people have said or things that have happened that have not nice and I would laugh it off and that was my defense mechanism I like when I used to go to Taekwondo I used to do martial arts and I would cringe and giggle that was my defense <laughs> the cringe and giggle please don't hit me <laughs> um, and that was it. So every time I'd say something that was not funny, I would laugh and I would try and laugh it off. And that's kind of like a little hiccup, a little lift on the jar to sort of let out a tiny bit of emotion, but not much, you know, just release that stress, that tension, or like, no, don't look at that emotion. I feel really, if I look at that one, I'm gonna cry or I'm gonna, you know, those feelings are trying to bubble up out of me. And no, 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 we keep that lid on, <laughs> keep that lid on tight, that stuff's not coming out. <laughs> but when we do that, you know, the, the blood's going to blow eventually or it's going to spill or it's going to bubble out when we don't want it to. So if we can find ways of releasing those emotions, when we don't find ways of releasing those emotions and we keep them all suppressed, we keep them all bottled up, they can sort of bubble up when we don't want them to or any time we can talk about or access or tap, almost tap into any emotions, they kind of come bubbling up and so that's where we might find ourselves crying when we and we don't know why. And like, um, you know, or you can be so angry that you're crying. Like, I've cried happy tears, angry tears, all of the tears, uh, sad tears, of course. So, finding resourceful ways to let them out. Instead of, you know, I'm so angry that I want to punch you, and I might, because uh, <laughs> if we can redirect it, if we can find ways of expressing it, of getting it out resourcefully, productively, <sighs> that aren't going to damage relationships and all of the other things that are going to keep other people safe because it's not okay to hurt a, a, another person because we're hurting, we've got these emotions and they're hurting us and we can lash out. This can be what's happening with kids, that these feelings can be big and hard and we don't know how to deal with them. This is where that co-regulation where the adult, the, the regulated adult can work in with them and help them process it and can walk them through okay you're feeling really angry and sometimes just narrating that just putting some words on it can help so much you can feel seen and heard and I know that was a big 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 one for me is to feel seen and heard <laughs> instead of ignored and brushed off and mm. <laughs> you should just be quiet <laughs> um, when I was at my mum's when we went back to Tassie I was trying to go through I'd step, left some crap at my mum's that I didn't know how to deal with or some stuff that I actually wanted to keep and then a whole heap of stuff that I didn't have time to deal with. So it was like old school stuff that she'd kept from me, for me from primary school. So going through all that and reading like what goals I was setting in prep and grade one. So like five, six years old, my goals were to be quiet. And then the next year, it was to shut up. And I'm like, this goes on for years and no one's picked up on it. And my goals in these books written over and over and over again is to learn how to be quiet, to get better at being quiet. I'm like, oh, how is this okay? And my teachers are like reading this and ticking this. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I'm quite glad that I've never learned that skill. <laughs> never got better at that goal. <laughs> Still not one I want to work on. Sometimes I definitely do think I talk too much, but you know, <laughs> got a lot to say. When I feel like I'm not seen and heard, then um, I want to talk even more. <laughs> so finding people who want to listen to you or finding ways of um, letting that out, journaling, <laughs> writing it out, all of the things, it can really, really help. And like this is where I've been talking about journaling recently is instead of having it play on your, in your head on a loop, and obsess over it, you can write it out and move past it. So when we're looking at starting to feel our feelings, so some really good ways to do that, to get back in touch with them, is like to watch a really sad movie. 
So, um, and just let yourself cry and just be sort of in that space of like, right, <laughs> I'm ready, I know. And this is a safe space and this is a really nice way of starting to let ourselves get it back in touch with feeling those feelings. Um, you know, also watching the happy feel-good movies and the laughing. The laugh is just as big of a release as the crying. So it's amazing to journal it out, to have a big angry dance. You can put on some angry music. Um, oh, I'm thinking Footloose. Has anyone seen the, the scene where the guy, like the new version, I don't think I've ever watched the original, <laughs> um, does like this big angry dance out in the barn. It's like that. That is awesome. <laughs> Go and do a big angry dance about something. Rage. You can have a big adult tantrum. Let those feelings out in a safe space. Not in front of the kids <laughs> if we're having a big angry tantrum where we're yelling and swearing and yeah, punching pillows or whatever it is. <laughs> Maybe the punching the pillows. Totally, you can do that in front of the kids. If we're yelling and swearing, especially about them, we don't want to do that in front of them. <laughs> we could, like, yell whisper. I was watching a training yesterday where <laughs> um, the amazing coach was talking about doing that. <laughs> She's so angry with her kids and yell whispering and kicking the beanbag and like upstairs where they couldn't see her or hear her. But if she were yelling and swearing about them, that would be traumatic for them. But for her to let these feelings out and to just, oh, okay, now I've got that out. Oh, I can come back and be present and play with them and, you know, not be resentful and have all these feelings squished down and it's going to blow out at some point because that's what can sort of happen if we can think of it as like, a pressure cooker, or almost a volcano, a pressure cooker where um, if we don't like have a little hole or a little steam release to let some steam off as we go, it'll just bubble up and the pressure will keep building and building and building and it'll bubble up and it'll spill over and it'll be a big mess. So it's exactly like that. That was an analogy from the psychologist that I saw. Um, so learning different ways to let off some steam and that can be journaling, that can be going for a walk or a run or a swim, that can be dancing and just, it doesn't have to be an angry dance, it can be any kind of dance, just put on some music, sing, <sighs> especially like I find the angry music where I can sing it out and like relate to what they're saying, whatever it is, <laughs> can be really helpful movement movement again in there like list, walking and listening to those sort of that sort of music can be really really good for me um the dancing but it doesn't have to be the angry music and it can be any feeling it can be any whatever <laughs> moving dancing putting on some music and dancing around and you know feeling good as well <sighs> feeling into our body getting present um and some other steam release things like especially if it's stuff with the kids or with our partners where we're feeling um, it might be going out and hanging out the washing was one of mine <laughs> I can go outside I can focus on something I can be in my head while I'm doing it <laughs> but I've gone outside I've walked away it's given me something to do to keep me out there for a few minutes <sighs> probably likely to have a couple more breaths while you're out there <laughs> but um, going for a walk taking some breaths tuning into your senses. How do I feel? Sometimes it is a matter of recognizing how am I feeling right now? I, or even just labeling it, naming it. I feel so angry. I feel so frustrated. Or um, if we're wanting to talk about it, this is where my husband and I used to run into issues is because we'd talk about it and I felt like we had to talk about it and resolve it, but it would be so heated and this big argument, it was not resourceful at all. It's like there's no point talking about it like that because neither of us are listening or taking in what the other person is saying. So we want to come back when we're calm. The 20-minute rule, if it's getting to that point, walk away, walk away, 20 minutes, come back, and we can try and talk about it again calmly then. And if it gets straight back to heated, walk away. <laughs> there is no point. You're not getting your point across when it's like that. Um, and it took me a long time to learn that. And it you know, nearly destroyed my marriage because it was hard. <laughs> and I got so triggered because I didn't feel seen or heard. And I felt so angry and frustrated. I'm like, just listen to me. <laughs> but <laughs> finding productive ways. So one of the most useful tools that I found there is writing it out, journal again, or just this simple, simple thing. It, was, it could be six lines, three lines. This little formula that I absolutely love is when you, do, 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 whatever he did that pissed you off or that upset you, that triggered you, whatever it was, when you do this, 
I feel, I feel angry, I feel frustrated, I feel unheard, I feel unseen, I feel unvalued, unappreciated, unloved. What? <laughs> name it. Name it. It can be so helpful and so powerful to just name it. <laughs> oh, that in itself. Half the time I didn't even have to go and talk to him about it after that. Once I'd written out how I actually felt about it, it's like, oh, that's better. <laughs> um, usually I would with husband. With other people I had an issue with, like at work or something, I didn't always feel the need, or I didn't usually feel the need to then actually go and talk about it with them. Um, though it's a really handy little tool that can. So super simple. And then we can just be clear, get that clarity. So when we are communicating it, and especially where emotions can be higher around it, clear, concise, especially for men, the masculine. <laughs> we want to be clear and concise as much as we can in that way. So when you, I feel I need. So basically next time or for now, I need you to apologize. I need you to listen to me. I need you to do, I need you to let me talk about this. I need you to take out the rubbish, whatever it is. <laughs> I need you to I use that example because it's a book um, out of a book I've just been reading, The Queen's Code. Oh my god, read it. It's amazing. Read it and then reread it. And then probably reread it again. It's <laughs> awesome. I love it. I wish I had discovered it years ago. The Queen's Code by Alison A. Armstrong. Incredible. It's um, very, very big about relationships, masculine, feminine, how to understand and work with men and get along and how to improve your relationships. But it's written in this really easy to read, engaging way because it's all sort of based in non nonfiction. It's fiction. <laughs> I always get those mixed up. Fiction's made up, right? <laughs> Non-fiction is not made up. <laughs> so um, it's told in this story following these. Well, there's a, there's a first book called Keys to the Kingdom, which I also highly recommend, especially if you're a mother of a son or if you've got a partner, um, a husband, a yeah, <laughs> masculine partner particularly. So it's learning about masculine and feminine, which aren't necessarily men and women. We all have masculine and feminine in us, but it's sort of still getting my head around that bit. <laughs> um, awesome books, both by Alice and Amy Armstrong, A. Armstrong. So Keys to the Kingdom is the first one, but a lot of people read them in the other order anyway. So Keys to the Kingdom, there's four characters in it, and then it branches out into eight characters in the second one, and I love it. So if you were going to only read one, I'd go The Queen's Code, but both brilliant. <laughs> ah, there's skydivers, I think. Well, that's what Jeremy says they are. There's one, two, three, four. I have to show you. Look! I thought they were paraslailers, paragliders, paragliders. Jeremy says they are skydivers. I don't know. Either way, I want to do that one day when I'm not pregnant. <laughs> How cool is that? Oh, I love it here. We are on Mission Beach, by the way and I'm having a hard time leaving. But we're off to Ingham today. We're going to meet with our amazing midwife. And then we're going to Townsville on Monday to hang out with the homeschool group on Tuesday. And then we're heading to Early Beach for a selfography in-person workshop with the amazing Paula RV uh, next Sunday. So yeah, one week to go. How cool is that? Love it. Ah, so awesome. So, Jeremy's up there packing up the caravan. And he's probably done and waiting for me now. <laughs> so, after this last guy lands, <laughs> I'm gonna go. <laughs> but that is so cool. Ah. If you haven't been to Mission Beach, I can highly recommend it. It's very pretty beach, very chilled. Apparently it's a five, five and a half, five metre croc that just goes up and down the beach there though, so don't swim in it. <laughs> there are swimming nets up there a little bit further, but check them, <laughs> or apparently, <laughs> apparently just if there's no one else swimming in them, maybe don't, maybe don't. <laughs> They've had seen like a little croc just resting on top of the swimming nets before. <laughs> awesome, like a log. Of course, why wouldn't they? I haven't seen any crocodiles yet, but you know, very cool. 
but it's beautiful. I love it here. Oh, the palm trees and the sunrises have been amazing. And oh, I keep sitting on a palm tree over there. It's beautiful. So that's been my background for most of my lives. Can you see this bent one here? That's my favorite little, just in front of, behind, in front of those people. <laughs> love it. So good. Okay, so feeling our feelings. All feelings are okay. All feelings are human. All feelings are normal. We all feel them. It's okay to feel them. When we don't feel the shitty feelings, the bad feelings, then we also don't, we dole down and we don't feel the good feelings as well either. So when we won't let ourselves feel angry or sad or whatever, we also can't feel as happy. So it's important <laughs> that we just let them through. Stop trying to push them down and just, you know, name them, get them out, find ways of expressing them. There's so many. <laughs> healthy ways of expressing them that yeah because you know that energy stuck in our body thing I'm still getting my head around this too but it can cause so many issues for us it can actually cause us to get sick it can cause diseases and all sorts of things manifest in weird ways and it can depend what you're holding on to and all the things like um constipation is holding on to too much old shit like literally emotionally <laughs> whereas diarrhea can be letting too much go <laughs> so maybe we need to <laughs> balance that out a little bit uh, I find it absolutely fascinating <laughs> it's very very cool so anyway um coaching avail uh, availability accountability accountability or connection coaching I'm just switching it into connection coaching I'm thinking that, that feels more me um accountability partner connection someone to bounce off whatever whatever you need you've got me in your back pocket you can voice text however much you like there's no boundaries at this point about how much time I'm going to be spending in there um, I'm just having fun doing it so any questions whether you go into that or not if you have questions around any of this please feel free to message me anytime yeah, ask all your questions or if you just want to chat about anything please do message me or yeah, anything at all and I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you very soon Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe.